Gary Walker. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about weather modification. You're very welcome. So you're the co-owner of SOAR, which stands for Seeding Operations and Atmospheric Research. Um, for those of us not familiar with the technology, can you kind of give us the big picture overview of, of what this sort of weather modification is? Weather modification goes on in more than 40 countries in our world. Water is an issue for all of us and uh, uh, the United Nations even predicts that by 2050 that uh, most countries uh, in our world will have water shortages. Um, weather modification is a tool that's been in existence for well over 50 years. I spent 30 years uh, as the manager of a water conservation, two water conservation districts in Texas. Um, and the depletion of the Ogallala Aquifer was one of the main drivers behind my involvement with weather modification. And so in the agricultural areas of uh, the Panhandle of Texas, the South Plains of Texas, the Eastern New Mexico uh, portions uh, there in your state, uh, the groundwater depletions uh, and declines are, have been a very big concern for for producers, uh, uh, cities as well for many, many years. So you're working with meteorologists and watching forecasts and you get those suitable clouds. Kind of what happens next? What's the process? In the summertime, we're looking for those cumulus type clouds that uh, have liquid water in them and the airplane will uh, go into the go into the air and, and go toward the cloud identified by that meteorologist that will have suitable liquid water in it. And we will disperse an ice crystal type nucleate in that cloud and that, that, that uh, synthetic ice crystal then will uh, be attracted uh, to the water particles, those minute water particles, and then they become heavy enough to fall out as a raindrop. Clouds are generally uh, fairly inefficient, uh, and that's why cloud seeding does work. There's a lot of lot of moisture in the atmosphere. A cloud is not like a pitcher full of water, and once it pours out, it's just empty. The atmosphere, um, suitable clouds that are seeded at the proper time, uh, research. Uh, has shown that those those clouds last longer and produce more rainfall because that atmosphere continues to uh, keep that 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 cloud uh, uh, more or less in a constructive uh, phase. I know the state of Utah has been doing this for a while. You mentioned California. I'm curious. You've been doing this a while. Is there more and more of a demand for these types of services as more people are really? seeing the effects yes. of drought. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, again, it, it, cloud seeding is not the silver bullet. It's not going to end all droughts in all countries. Uh, but just like so many other things that we have that that enhance either our computers or enhance our gas mileage or whatever, um, we can enhance the rainfall and and the value of what I call a return on investment many, many times is uh, minuscule compared to what it costs to either build a pipeline or dig a new reservoir. Uh, those things take lots and lots of time. And so not to say that we shouldn't be concerned with conservation and reuse and even new supplies uh, such as they have available on the coastal areas of our country uh, and other countries for desalinization. So I imagine that you spend a lot of time talking with people who are pretty worried about the drought. Um, I'm curious if you could, you know, talk a little bit about what you've seen change over the decades when it comes to drought and and people trying different things or new things? Yeah, well, I, my last 25 years as a water district manager was right up across the eastern side of New Mexico in, in the Yoakum County area plains, 
uh, Denver City area. Our water declines in the aquifer there many years uh, was as much as two to three feet a year. Um, so a lot of those areas, um, Laura, they may only have uh, 20, 20, less than 30, 40 feet of saturated thickness left in the aquifer. Um, pretty easy to you know, to divide that by two and figure out about how many years that you have left to irrigate. And so we can extend the life of the aquifer a little by by producing um, some additional rainfall. Um, not, to, not to even talk about the, the savings and the pumping costs for agriculture. And of course, our, our ranching community, I mean, they're, they're tickled to death to have a you know, have a half inch anytime, but uh, it's certainly important for the for the production of our irrigated acres. Well, Gary, thanks so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. And here's hoping we all get some good clouds this summer. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, we we hope so as well. Hannah Risley White, thanks for joining me today to talk about weather modification. Thanks, Laura. It's a pleasure to be here. So when we're talking about weather modification, what activities are we actually, like, what do those encompass? Largely that encompasses either ground-based or aerial-based cloud seeding, usually using silver iodide or calcium or potassium chloride. And the idea is to put tiny particles in the sky under exactly the right conditions to help induce droplets to form to increase rainfall. So this isn't something that's necessarily new in the state of New Mexico. Um, procedures for the state to evaluate and potentially approve these projects are codified in the state's Water Quality Act, is that right? So yeah, actually the Weather Control Act was passed in 1965. Um, and we at New Mexico Interstate Stream Commission were only tasked with evaluating applications for licenses for cloud seeding um, in 2003, the legislature moved that responsibility from New Mexico Tech to us. And so just to be clear, we aren't necessarily proponents of it, but we are tasked by statute with evaluating applications for cloud seeding in New Mexico. So one application for um, a proposed project in Northern New Mexico was recently withdrawn. Can you talk a little bit about what that project would have been and kind of what happened in the process? Sure. So in October of last year, so 2021, we received an application for a license from a company called Western Weather Consultants. They would be the actual um, entity that would have conducted this particular project that was um, ground-based cloud seedings. This would have been a project to induce additional rainfall over the Sangre de Cristo Mountains through ground-based cloud seeding using silver iodide. Um, they, however, were not the project sponsor. That was so Roosevelt Soil and Water Conservation District, which received in the 2021 legislative session funding for cloud seeding specifically. Um, but we got a tremendous amount of interest in that application, one of the requirements in our process in New Mexico is that any um, application for a license for cloud seeding has to be noticed publicly in newspapers. We received over 250 protests associated with that particular application. Um, so lots and lots of interest in it. Um, and we're, we're glad to see that people care and are concerned about water issues in New Mexico. Um, as you, I think, know, we've also been working on the governor's 50 year water plan over the last year. and so. Um, hoping that some of the folks whose attention was caught by the cloud seeding efforts might get interested in that process as well, given the sort of scarcities that we're facing. Do you anticipate or does the state anticipate getting more of these types of applications? Is this something we're going to see more of, you think? You know what? I would not be surprised, um, given that we're in the third year of a, a significant drought across the state. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, doing this work on the 50 year water plan, you know, the, the anticipated increasing scarcity to our water supplies across the state is significant. We're looking at a 25% reduction in water supplies by 2070. So I think people will um, 
you know, continue to have quite a bit of interest in cloud seeding. I should also mention that in receiving the application that we received last fall for the Songrays, and in looking at this current application, that you know, we um, have some thoughts at the staff level in terms of potential changes to the rule, the weather enhancement rule, um, which is what governs how these applications are handled. We also heard pretty loud and clear from folks last fall that, that they'd like to see some changes. For example, protests have to be received in writing um, and within certain time period. And so I do think, and we flagged for our commission at our last um, Interstate Stream Commission meeting, that they should anticipate some chain, potential changes to the rule um, coming this year that would make it bring it into the 21st century a little bit, make it easier for folks who, who care and want to engage and also streamline the process for us. So you mentioned some really stark numbers there. Um, and I'm curious because, you know, looking at the current application before the state, um, you know, they note that industry standards suggest that a 15 to 20% increase in rainfall is likely over a normal summer seeding season of four to six months. Like that seems like such a slim, you know, like a slim chance that we're taking, but is the water situation in New Mexico such that we're just trying to grab at any tool or possibility? Um, like how big of an impact could weather modification really have? Um, I mean, I think it can be successful given certain, just the right circumstances. So um, from my understanding, even that 15 to 20% increase is, 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 you know, in the under exactly the right conditions, right? So, um, I think, you know, what's been interesting as part of this 50 year water planning effort is there's a lot of folks who look to solutions that involve increasing supply. So that could be cloud seeding or interbasin transfers or all those types of things. Um, in my opinion, a lot of those are, are challenging and expensive. And sometimes where you, you actually get the biggest bang for your buck is conservation, right? So how do we look at how we're using the water that we have now in our existing basins and, and use it more wisely. And probably ultimately the solution will be some combination of all of those things, lots of tools in the, in the toolbox, um, but certainly more work needs to be done on a basin by basin um, basis and with the water users and stakeholders in each of those basins to think through what are the solutions that make sense in each of those regions, given the scarcity that we're facing. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that cloud seeding is some silver bullet that will solve all of our problems by any means. Yeah. But it could be a part of it could be a part of the solution, um, especially for communities that feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Well, Hannah Risley White, thank you so much for talking with me about this. It's a really fascinating topic. You're so welcome. I'm happy and thanks for having me.